Welcome to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. By the end of the First World War, warfare had undergone a monumental transformation with the advent of tanks, modern artillery, rifles, machine guns, airplanes, and poison gas. Common belief suggests that cavalry became obsolete in this new era of modern warfare. But is that really true? Let's explore. Cavalry is one of the oldest military units, and by 1914, over 700,000 cavalrymen served in European armies. Leading up to WWW1, cavalry units evolved rapidly to keep up with new technologies and tactics. By the war's onset, they were equipped with machine guns, operated in dispersed formations to avoid enemy fire, and utilized mobile horse artillery to maneuver powerful guns swiftly across the battlefield. Military leaders debated whether cavalry should engage the enemy from a distance with rifles and machine guns or close in with revolvers, lances, or sabers. Most agreed on a combination of both. For instance, the 1912 British Cavalry Training Manual emphasized using both rifles and swords, highlighting the flexibility and independence they provided. German pre-war strategies also integrated cavalry for reconnaissance, rear guard actions, and exploiting gaps created by other military arm. As the war began in 1914, cavalry theories were put to the test. Every army deployed cavalry, adapting their roles as the conflict evolved. Let's start with the French. In 1914, the French cavalry faced significant challenges, especially in horse care. The lack of emphasis on long-term horse health led to high casualties among their mounts. For example, during a grueling 38-day march into Belgium and back, many horses died from exhaustion and lack of proper care. By 1916, the French improved their horse care practices, inspired by British methods learned during the Second Boer War. This adaptation led to more effective cavalry operations later in the war. For instance, in 1917, a French cavalry reconnaissance force successfully probed German positions during their retreat to the Hindenburg Line with minimal losses. While cavalry charges seemed outdated against the trenches and machine guns of the Western Front, they sometimes proved effective. At the Battle of Soissons in 1918, a French cavalry squadron captured a German position after a failed infantry attack, demonstrating that mounted troops could still play a decisive role. In the Middle East, British Empire cavalry was strategically crucial against the Ottoman. Units from the UK, India, Australia, and New Zealand demonstrated the effectiveness of cavalry in this theater. The Australian Light Horse, initially not equipped with sabers, adapted and achieved significant victories, such as the charge at Beersheba in 1917. The Germans also utilized cavalry effectively, especially in more fluid combat situations. In Romania, German cavalry successfully harassed and pursued retreating Romanian forces, contributing to their strategic victory. The Russian cavalry, the largest of all, also played a vital role. Cornet Vladimir Litauer's experiences illustrate the varied tasks of cavalrymen, including reconnaissance, charges, rear guard actions, and ambush. Overall, cavalry adapted to the changing nature of warfare during WW1. While their roles evolved, cavalry remained a valuable and versatile arm of service, complementing mechanized units and providing critical support in various combat situations. The story of cavalry in WW1 is one of adaptation and resilience, reflecting the broader evolution of modern warfare. If you're interested in learning more about the Soviet nuclear program from its origins in WW2 to the Chernobyl disaster and beyond, check out our new documentary series Red Atoms exclusively on Nebula. Nebula is a streaming service where we can share content directly supporting creators like us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more engaging content on military history and beyond.